Okay, I'm going to demonstrate how to install a masthead amplifier, one of these devices. So first of all, we need to cut our existing cable. Because a masthead amplifier will usually fit onto the antenna pole like that. So first of all, I'm going to cut the cable ties on my service loop. And the first few cable ties on the antenna cable. Alright, so now... I need enough cable to sort of come around in a loop and up into the bottom of my amplifier. So I'm going to cut my cable here. Now these amplifiers fit on using a cable tie. There's a couple of slots in the back there. So this just sort of goes on there, pull it through. Close the cable tie. Okay, and then we just trim it off. So it just sits on there with some slots. So I need to terminate this end of the cable now with an F connector. Most amplifiers that you buy will be F type. There are some that use saddle and clamp but I'd always recommend an F-Type. This particular one is a King Ray amplifier. It's an MDA type that's designed for digital TV. And one thing to remember when buying is always make sure you get the correct band coverage. Some cover VHF high, some cover UHF, some cover both. So you need to make sure you have the right band coverage on the amplifier for your particular location. So it's just a little clip to open up here. And inside there you can see there's two F-type uh, connectors to screw onto. But the one thing you will note is it doesn't actually tell you on this particular one whether this is input or output. So you need to make sure you've got the right um, connectors for the input and output. So we can just actually unscrew the cover on this one. Different brands of amplifier will vary. Some of them have a circuit board straight inside the plastic cover. Others will have a sealed box like this. These ones have a sealed shielded box to minimise any sorts of um, interference from electrical noise and the like. Alright, so there we go. Alright, so if you look in here, you can see there's an arrow pointing inwards and an arrow pointing outwards. So the input goes into here and the output to the splitter goes here. So our cable from the TV antenna can come into this one and we just screw that one off to just a little bit more than finger tight. And now we know this one's going to be our output so we can put the cover back on. Right, and now we just take the end of our cable that was going into the house and we just need to terminate that now with another F connector. Now hopefully you would have had enough cable in the roof or on the pole with a service loop to do this without having to rerun the cable to the splitter. But if they haven't left enough cable in the roof when it was originally done, you may find you have to run a new cable to the splitter or a new cable to the, from, the splitter to, uh, from the amplifier to the um, antenna itself. Okay, so I've terminated that and then I just put it in like so. Right, when that's done, close up the box. Now some people like to put tape all the way around just to keep it sealed up even better. Um, I personally don't do that. Um, the main thing is to make sure that the opening is at the bottom because that way the moisture won't um, flow along the cable and straight up into there. And if you have a nice loop here, it means that any moisture will drip down below the amplifier box rather than going up into the amplifier. So I'd always put a cable tie directly below. 
that just ensures that it always runs nicely down the hole and then just replace the cable ties that we cut out. Let's go put a new service loop in as well. If you've got the cable available you should always put a service loop in even if it's a fairly small one like this one. And then we just trim off like that and that's done.